Hey friends, it's Tommy Z. I'm sitting on my balcony. It's a beautiful day. I just finished my morning routine, which involves, of course, some journaling. Where's my journal? A journal, stickers from my daughter, of course. Some reading. <laughs> now you have a clue as to the topics that I'm wrestling with in my own life. Some heavy stuff too, like St. John of the Cross in Polish. Wow, pretty deep stuff. But folks, I was inspired to record a video for you as I wrap up my morning routine. What I wanted to talk about is, number one, you should have a morning routine. I realize that not all of you have your own time to manage. You're working for someone else. You got to be at a day job or whatever. But folks, I remember when I had a day job and I felt this sense of a lack of freedom because my time was somebody else's during the day. And that really made me want to get up earlier so I could at least have an hour of my own time up to my own discretion first thing in the morning. And I can tell you that that made a lot of difference in my frequency, how I felt from day to day just getting up earlier. It was difficult at first, but it was certainly compensated by the feelings I had of freedom, of possibility of being able to get ahead of the world and its chase by being able to sit in silence and define my own vision, my own possible paths for the future so that when the world went off to the races and I joined it, I joined it with a completely different frequency. So I recommend that to you if you happen to have a day job. If you don't happen to have a day job, and your time is up to your own discretion. I certainly recommend that you don't rush into work. I know everybody's different, but I like to go to the well first, the well of life-giving water, meaning I like to connect with my conscience first thing in the morning. I like to connect with my deeper self first thing in the morning. In my case, I'm a believer, so I believe if I didn't make myself and I am made intelligently, I have intelligence, I'm able to perceive things, it's probably a good idea to tune in to the higher frequency. Because if the higher frequency orchestrates this wonderful spectacle called existence and universe, you might want to consult, you might want to tune into that transmission and operate according to the laws we already see evident in the way that the world operates mostly in a harmonious way. Okay, but I don't want to go into a sermon here. I simply wanted to tell you very quickly how I stay connected to my unique purpose through a simple daily practice and how I go about scanning my entire life. Because today life is very fast. It's very complex. There's a lot of information that we expose ourselves to and I'm not even sure why, to be honest, because like if you look at our forefathers, they didn't live in the information technology, right? They simply got up in the morning. They were like, what does this day demand of me? Okay, I got to get something to eat. Okay, I got to maybe make something for someone so I get paid to put food on the table. Great, that's what I'm about to do. Let me eat some breakfast and let me get started on that. But notice how with the introduction of these smart devices, we've had this incredible intrusion into our lives of things that are not impactful, significant, or of any consequence whatsoever. We are exposing ourselves to an overwhelming amount of information that is completely insignificant to our lives, and yet it steals our time, our energy, our senses. It absorbs us. It makes us emotional. It really burns a lot of calories sitting in your feet and obsessing over you know, what's happening in the world that you do not have direct control over, and that's the main point, is that I believe a sense of joy, peace, and clarity and calm in your life comes from only devoting your mental ram, your energy to the things that are within your direct influence. And notice how with the introduction of these devices here, we're basically spending a lot of time reading, consuming, worrying about things that have nothing to do with us. So back to the example of our forefathers. If someone asked your great-great-grandfather while he was on the way 
He was walking the cows to the field, right? Someone else stopped him and said, hey, Jimmy, did you hear about what happened on the other side of the ocean? Some guy did this or that. And it was unbelievable. It was astonishing. You won't believe what he did. This is what he did. And your great, great grandfather might have been like, Bob, why are you telling me all of this? What am I supposed to do with this information? I don't even know why I'm putting on a, a Southern accent, if that is even is a Southern accent. The point is your great, great grandfather, upon hearing news of what happened across the ocean, that might've been funny, might've been shocking, might've been surprising, like most of the things in our newsfeed, might say to his neighbor, okay, but why are you telling me this? What does it have to do with me and the things that belong for me to do today, to take care of all the things I have to take care of? Absolutely nothing, right? But we've gotten carried away We've gotten carried away, a lot of us unconsciously, into make the, making this a normal behavior, basically like scrolling a bunch of insignificant factoids or clickbaits, literally spending precious minutes, hours of our life absorbing our attention with things that have nothing to do with our life. Now, I don't know if you've heard the studies, but the studies clearly show social media feeds are harmful to your well-being. I don't know how else to say it. People are more anxious, more depressed, not less. They don't feel happier. They don't feel calmer after going through social media feeds. So I don't think there is any good reason to start your day with consuming things that have nothing to do with your particular life, your unique purpose, your unique calling. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, I'm saying this because it's important, because if you don't eat your mental RAM first thing in the morning with this, then you make more mental RAM available for your life, your path, your unique circumstances, right? Instead of trying to get your directions of what your day and what your life is going to look like from the outside world. And so the way that I like to kickstart my day is, first of all, not a digital tablet, but an analog tablet. This beautiful device, which is free from pop-ups. It is free from notifications. It is free from um, all sorts of things that are going to guide my actions instead of allowing me to just focus on hearing the transmission of my heart, whatever's coming up in my mind. And then what I like to do is I basically identified seven what I call frequencies or seven areas of life that are universal to everybody. All right. I know you might say, well, everybody's different, but just hear me out. Hear those seven frequencies or areas of life and let me know if they're irrelevant to you because I've tried and I've thought about this long and hard to remove some of these areas. And I've tried to explore if there are more to add, but I always end up with these seven, okay? And they kind of go in the order of importance for me. So check this out. Number one is faith. Faith, for those of you who believe in God, that's obvious. But for those of you who don't, don't dismiss it just yet. Faith is believing in things that you cannot put under a microscope. Believing in, in things that are true, but are beyond yourself. So that could be things like purpose. For instance, you want to build a business. This business does not exist. And therefore, for the time being, you have to believe in it as a vision. I can't, you can't show it under a microscope. It doesn't exist. You have to hold this idea in your mind as a vision and you have to believe in it. If you don't believe in it, if you don't have faith in your vision, you're not going to be putting brick on brick and building this business. Okay. So does that make sense? So faith is number one, because I believe that human beings are mind, body, and soul. And the soul is your invisible operating system. And the deepest callings, the deepest hungers, the deepest thirsts, come from this invisible operating system. And the degree to which we connect with this invisible operating system is the degree to which you will feel over time, the better you get at connecting with this invisible operating system called soul, 
that you're living out your unique life. The less you connect with your soul, the more you run the risk of living from the outside in, meaning that you get your cues, your directions, your scripts from the world surrounding you. And it might be exciting for a while. It might be exhilarating for a while. All these adventures and chases and dreams that may not belong to you. But there will always, 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 always come a point when you are like, why does this not fulfill me? Why do I feel empty? Why do I feel tired and uninspired? And a good reason for it might be, there might be a host of reasons, but very likely a good reason for this is that you are climbing a ladder that is up the wrong wall. You are running a race that is not yours to run. You are living out somebody else's dream that might have seemed very attractive at first, but because it is not your dream, your conscience will always inevitably speak up at some point. It'll say, why are you running around for something that you don't believe in, right? The reason we get tired and uninspired, folks, is because life doesn't make sense to us, okay? There might be more reasons, but ultimately, I believe that the cause of you being tired and uninspired is because things in some area of your life are not making sense to you, okay? And the, what you want to do is find a script that is speaking from your soul, that is being written from your soul, deep within, because I believe we're all created with a unique purpose, a unique path, a unique set of superpowers, unique circumstances. There is nobody else like you. The degree to which you tap into that is the degree to which I believe you will feel like you're living a life of true joy, true peace, true fulfillment. All right. But notice all of these things are invisible. The things I'm talking about, a sense of purpose, all those things are invisible. The neuroscientists can point you to all kinds of um, technical terms about how the brain functions and that it's all a result of this part of the brain or that part of the brain. I'm not fully convinced that you can just chalk up love to, you know, neurons firing in the brain and that's all it is. Okay. I believe it is much deeper than that. I don't think you can find love under a microscope. I don't think you can find courage under a microscope. I believe these are things that actually emanate from way deeper. They're deeper than blood. They're deeper than DNA. They're deeper than neurons. They're deeper than myelin. They're deeper than uh, this or that part of the brain. They actually emanate from a thing that is invisible that I call soul. Okay. But that's the number one frequency, faith. We begin with things that we cannot see, but that are arising within us that are calling for our attention. Number two is fitness. And I don't mean working on your triceps or on your biceps, but I'm not excluding it either. But for me, fitness is a lot more holistic. If we conceive of a human being as mind, body, and soul, for me, fitness refers to fueling your tank on all of those levels. And folks, I've had times in my life where fitness for me just meant going to the gym, getting nice muscles and looking pretty. But something inside of me at some point told me, look, fitness is a holistic thing. It has a lot to do with not just the body, but the state of your mind, the state of your soul. Okay. And I had to go through a bunch of um, storms in my life and anxiety attacks to realize this, that physical fitness is not always the cure for what may be ailing you. Sure, you need to be physically healthy and you should have habits in place to ensure your physical health. But some of your anxiety and restlessness may be coming, for instance, from the mind that you do not feel on top of things that you do not feel you can face certain challenges. You worry a lot about how you're going to handle something. Your anxiety may even go deeper than the mind. It may go into the soul. You may feel an existential crisis. You may feel an existential dread, right? So, so it's really important to acknowledge that, that as a human being, we need to address those three levels, okay? Get some exercise, get a good walk in, get some get some cardio in every day, do some resistance, lift something heavy. For your mind, what does fitness mean? It means 
gaining new knowledge, right, about areas that are important to you. So like I'm continually upgrading my knowledge so that I'm fit in the mind, so that I challenge my mind to understand more, right, through continual learning. And then fitness from a soul, from a spiritual perspective, means that I make time first thing in the day to connect with the higher intelligence, to tune into that frequency, to connect with my conscience, to sit in silence, right? For a few moments. Um, but that's what fitness is, energy and vitality of your mind, body, and soul, all right? The third frequency um, is the family. And notice how I ordered f fitness and family. You might be like, well, family should come first. And I'm not saying that family is less important than fitness. But the reason why I ordered it, this, ordered it this way is because I want to be the best version of myself that is available to my family. So before my family joins me in my day, before I make myself available to the family, I want to make sure that I fuel up mentally, physically, and spiritually so that my best is available to my family. I hope that makes sense. It's you know pretty uh, intuitive to me. And so this is why before I put on someone else's oxygen mask, like they tell you on the airplane, I put on my own, okay? But family is self-explanatory, right? Um, a lot of us get lost in careers. A lot of us get lost chasing our own dreams or chasing our own purpose. We want to go off and go across the ocean and feed kids in Africa. Very noble goal. But if you have a family at home that feels like you're not actually... Uh, paying attention to them, uh, it seems pretty strange that you would, you know, set off on some big, bold purpose uh, outside of your home when there are people counting on you that love you, that you love, waiting for you at home to fulfill your mission at home. So I always remind myself of that, that sometimes, you know, fulfilling your destiny or some grand, ambitious purpose is not about trying to change the world somewhere out there, but instead look around where you are right now and um, see how you can be of service to those who are around you. Give me one moment. I have to answer the door because my kids just came from, uh, came from the outside. Okay, so I'm back. Number four frequency is fruit. And fruit is really your work. The things that you are called to do with your unique superpowers so you can uh, contribute uniquely to this world instead of chasing the world, instead of copying others, hopefully, as you go through your morning routine and tap into your faith and the frequency that belongs to you and to you only, uh, as you make your mind, body, and soul more fit, and all of this working in tandem and unison, your mind, body, and soul now you start asking yourself, okay, what do I do with these superpowers? How do I organize my talents and my time so that I can get some traction, put some meaningful things out into the world so I can serve and be of use, um, not just at home to my family, but actually to my neighbor out in the marketplace, out in the street. But notice that fruit will actually show up in all of the different frequencies. So fruit is basically like, what are the results? What are the things that um, are true that are the result of your practice in each of these seven areas? So there'll be fruit for, for instance, uh, practicing your faith. There'll be fruit within the area of fitness. There will be fruit in the area of family, right? You've heard the saying, you shall know them by the fruit. And I like the word fruit because fruit is something that you can see, that is visible, that you can taste. Uh, we like being around people who are known for having done something and not just uh, being around people who are talking all the time. In fact, I actually don't like being around people who do a lot of talking, but not a lot of doing. I'm sure you don't like it either. But next time... You're sitting uh, next to someone who is constantly talking, but they don't have much fruit to show for it. It'd be good to use them as a reminder for yourself that you don't want to be like that. All right. So that's fruit. After fruit comes folks. Okay. And folks for me is my relationships, my relationships with those 
outside of the family. Okay. Although I call everyone family. And the reason for this is because I try not to surround myself with people who will not be at my funeral. All right. So um, I've realized in my life that everything that is best in your life will not be because of things. It will be because of people, relationships. It's other people really who will provide the best the happiest, sometimes the saddest experiences in your life. But bottom line is, whether happy or sad, these will be enriching experiences, all right? The sad parts, even the tragic parts um, of dealing with people are always the most impactful as far as teaching us, as far as allowing us to experience the fullness of life. Having a conscious approach to relationships in your life, I believe, is one of the most important things. And that's why I single out folks as a frequency that I want to pay attention to. Every single morning, you want to ask yourself, who is it that inspires me? Is it possible to reach out to them and let them know that their work inspires me? You would be surprised how many people that you think are not reachable will actually reply to you when you write them a a heartfelt letter of Uh, appreciation and recognition without asking them for anything in particular. I mean, I don't know of anyone who doesn't appreciate getting an email or a letter or whatever, a message that says, hey, this thing that you said, it really resonated with me. It helped me at a time when things were difficult or whatever. It made me laugh. It made me cry. And you know how like we're going through all of our messages, always scanning for potential problems or for potential asks, right? Uh, we're almost wired this way. It's like, what does this person want from me? Do they have something to sell me? What do they want from me? What's the ask? But how delighted we are every time you read an email that doesn't have an ask, that is just like innocently and purely about appreciation. I don't know anyone who doesn't appreciate that. Okay. I very much appreciate when I get emails like that. And so thinking about folks in an intentional way. So that's folks. Okay. We are on number six, I believe that is finance. I believe that no matter who you are, you're going to need money in order to survive. Okay. Some of us are driven by money. Some of us are not driven by money. No matter whether uh, you're driven by money or not, whether you want to make lots of money or it's not that important to you, you just want to pay your bills. Money is something that you have to be conscious of. Money is something that can be a source of terrible conflicts, difficulties, worries, depression in our life. But also uh, money can be a source of a lot of opportunity, a lot of possibilities. Um, a lot of happiness. I'm not going to equate money to deep joy, but I am going to say that if you are able to manage your money well, it can certainly, number one, alleviate the stress, so remove the stress and anxiety from your life. But number two, it can allow experiencing some enriching uh, activities that will elevate you and the people who are close to you. Uh, But often that can be distorted, meaning that I know people who are constantly worrying about making more and more money because they feel if they're not traveling to exotic locations, then they're not living their life to the fullest. Now, I'm not resonating with that whatsoever. I believe that one of the best skills you can have is to not equate your happiness with sensual pleasure, but to learn how to have a deep sense of gratitude and joy without necessarily having to travel somewhere. If you can be happy like Uncle Z sitting on this balcony here with my cup of coffee, with the ability for me to transmit myself to you, with a good book, with a journal, if you can be happy with all of those things, just imagine, this doesn't cost me a whole lot, right? So now imagine if I go out there and I serve other people well and I'm smart with money and I'm living way beyond my means. That means money will be accumulating uh, in my bank account because I don't actually need to spend money in order to be genuinely happy. 
Okay, so I'm not really stressed about money because it's accumulating in my account. I'm living, uh, um, I'm living uh, way below my means, and I'm spending most of my time not spending money on sensual experiences, not having to do that. Although I like to do it once in a while, instead I'm spending my time doing things simple things that don't cost a lot of money that bring me a lot of joy. So that's the money frequency. So let's recap so far. We've had number one, faith. Number two, fitness. Number three, family. Number four, fruit. Number five, folks. Number six was um, uh, finances. And number seven is fun. That's the first thing you should schedule. There is a sense of happiness and joy when you're looking forward to something. You ever had that? Like you start your week and you're like, oh, another week. And you know you have all these things to do. But there's always this ray of sunshine and it brings a smile to your face when you know that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, you have something planned that is going to be fun that you can look forward to. And so I've realized that in my own life that difficult tasks or things that I need to get done that don't bring me a lot of enthusiasm are often counterbalanced by having something fun that I intentionally schedule in my calendar that I will look forward to. It might be different for uh, everybody, like what fun is to you, right? But I would encourage you to schedule something in your calendar uh, at some point in the week, preferably maybe throughout the week. So you can have like smaller fun things that you're going to do on a daily basis even. So like you could schedule some 20 minute, half an hour to an hour activity at the end of the day that you're going to um, really, really look forward to that will make getting through each day easier. And then you can schedule something bigger at the end of the week that's going to make getting through the entire week easier. And then you can schedule something really big, like a weekend retreat or a weekend mini vacation so that you can look forward to it while you get through your quarter, right? Is that making sense? Schedule something in your calendar that you're going to look forward to. And so I've been talking for a while now about all of this, but really it boils down, okay? The degree to which you're going to feel a deep sense of control, joy, happiness in your life boils down to a simple morning routine where you scan each of the seven frequencies and you have something that you're intentionally doing in each area of that life. And it could be a bigger project, but I would encourage you to start with the smallest possible task that you're going to do in each of these areas in order to feel like you have more control in your life and your life is being lived holistically. You're not losing your perspective. You're not losing your balance by chasing one thing to the exclusion of everything else. Because that is temporary. That is not sustainable. We are built. Notice this. We are built for your conscience to alert you when your life is out of proportion, out of whack, out of balance. It happens every single time. So instead of constantly like countering, right? And like, okay, I'm out of balance this way. So now I got to shift all the way over here. Why not just stay steady? and take small steps in each of the seven frequencies that I just spoke about. And so let me give you an example. For faith, why not start the day with a morning prayer or with a minute of silence? If you've never sat in silence before, just sit in silence for a minute. In fact, let's do it right now. Watch this. Close your eyes. We're going to sit in silence together for a minute. Take a deep breath in and out. First, I want you to become aware of your body. Return to the awareness of your body. We give so, mo so much of our attention, so much of our awareness to the external world. We're not even in connection with our own body. So start your day and feel free to set a timer for a minute throughout the day to just scan your body from head to toe. Slowly go from the head, your face, your eyes, your jaw, down to your neck. 
Notice if you're holding any tension. And if you are, breathe in and release the tension in that part of the body with the breath out. Feel free to do that for the rest of your body. And when you're done scanning your body, just return to feeling the sensation of your breath. Just return to the awareness of you sitting wherever you are, feeling the sensation of your butt touching the chair, of your feet on the ground. Become aware of everything that is happening around you. Birds chirping, radio playing off in the distance. So many things we don't notice in our day-to-day -day rushing around. Allow yourself to spend a minute just to become aware and reconnected to your own body, to whatever arises in your mind, body, or soul. And once you have done that, become aware of where you're sitting and all that is happening around you. It is reality with a big R. It is happening. It is true. And the more you are aware of yourself in your immediate environment, the more you can become intentional, creative, appreciative, and grateful of the fact that you are here, you are alive, and you can participate in this beautiful symphony called life. I know that was more than a minute, but you know what? Time disappears when you sit in silence. It is a completely different frequency that you find yourself on, a frequency that allows you to do everything in a deeper, more purposeful, more peaceful way. Whereas most of the time, you begin your day by chasing the world, opening your email, reading your messages, and then everything you do for the rest of that day is with a sliver of your attention, of your consciousness, of your mind, body, and soul. A sliver. Because you're so divided and so distracted. Such a shallow life that is, right? This is why I encourage you, my friends. <laughs> my battery on my laptop is low, so I'm going to end this video. I encourage you, my friends, to carve out even 15 minutes of your time in the morning. Start it with silence. Spend a minute first thing in the morning to refuel that connection you have with yourself, with your conscience. Notice what arises. Notice what is calling for your attention. And then write out the seven frequencies on a piece of paper. Right? Faith, fitness, family, fruit, folks, finances, are, and fun. And write down the smallest possible task that you know you can do today in order to address each of these frequencies. And the degree to which you do this, and the degree to which you habituate this on a daily basis is the degree to which you will feel new levels of true contentment, true peace, true joy. I want to thank you for being here with me. Love you all. Sending you a big hug. And I'll see you in the next video. All right. Cheers.